Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at leadership styles as described by Kurt Lewin. Now your leadership style is the way you feel most comfortable leading others to achieve your vision. There are many different styles of leadership and understanding which type you are will make you better equipped to avoid the common pitfalls of that particular style. Now, some of the best leaders are able to adjust their style based on the situation they find themselves in. So for example, turning around a failing organization might require a very different approach to being asked to grow an already successful organization. So let's look at the four leadership styles as described by Kurt Lewin, a German-American psychologist. And once we've done that, we'll look at a simple framework that helps you visualize the differences between these leadership styles and any other styles you encounter. So the first style we're going to look at is autocratic leadership. And this style of leadership is centered around and focused on the leader. Now with this style of leadership, all decision-making resides with the leader and decisions are made by the leader without much or sometimes even any consultation with subordinates. Now an autocratic leader will reach a decision themselves communicated with their team and expect the team to execute with no questions asked. Now, an example of an autocratic leader is Martha Stewart. Now, there are some advantages to autocratic leadership. Uh, firstly, decision-making is fast. With no consultation required, the leader can make very quick decisions. It can improve performance in certain situations. So managers are motivated to perform because they have this feeling the leader is watching them all the time. And also it can be less stressful in certain circumstances. So for managers and other subordinates, it can result in less stress as the leader is shouldering all the responsibility for outcomes and all the decision-making responsibility. Now, there are also disadvantages to autocratic leadership. So it can be frustrating for subordinates. So communication is one way, which obviously people can find frustrating. Fear and resentment and frustration are common as people don't like being bossed about and criticized more often than praised. It can result in a paralyzed organization. And this can happen when the leader isn't present. So the entire organization is dependent on the leader for instructions, but when they're absent, they can't do anything. Uh, it can also lead to new opportunities being missed. So unless the leader keeps pace with new trends, as time goes on, new opportunities could be missed. And additionally, the lack of flexibility in autocratic leadership doesn't lend itself to planning for long-term initiatives. And finally, there can be communication breakdown. Because directives flow downwards from the leader to subordinates, misunderstandings and confusion can arise because of the lack of feedback that is allowed from subordinates. So there are still many situations where you should use autocratic leadership, uh, such as when quick decisions are needed. So autocratic leadership works best in situations where you need quick decisions, such as in turning around a failing organization or in a military situation. It's useful when close supervision is required. So it can work well when existing management is too lenient and workers are not pulling their weight. So the autocrat will issue directives to be followed and the activities performed as a result of these directives will be closely followed. And it can also work well when workflows need to be streamlined quickly. So autocratic leadership works really well when things just need to get done. And this style enables subordinates to just get on with things without really worrying about the bigger picture. So the second style of leadership, according to Lewin, is democratic leadership. And this is focused on the leader's team and is characterized by decision making being shared across the team. Now, in stark contrast to the autocratic leadership style, ideas are shared freely and open discussion is encouraged. Now, although discussion is encouraged, it is the role of the leader to guide and direct these discussions and ultimately make a decision as to which way to proceed. Now, democratic leaders expect their subordinates to have in-depth experience and to be self-confident. And examples of democratic leaders include John F. Kennedy and Larry Page. Now, advantages of this style include there is a decreased risk of catastrophic 
failure. So as decisions are made with the involvement of the entire group, it provides a kind of a group sanity check, meaning the leader is less likely, likely to make a disastrous decision. It creates a good working environment as subordinates at all levels can feel engaged in decision making. It creates high performance teams. So subordinates are encouraged to solve problems under their own initiative, which in turn can create a high performance team. Now, disadvantages of democratic leadership include decision making is slow. So by involving subordinates in decision making, you kind of dramatically slow down the process of making decisions. And that can be a real problem in urgent situations. There can be an overdependence on the team. So the leader can become overly dependent on the group and allow the group to make decisions, which obviously isn't good. They're sort of hiding within the team. And finally, there can be a collaboration bur burden. So leaders can become overly burdened with the overhead of ensuring their team meet and collaborate. So much so that they take their eye off what's really important to the organization and their foot kind of comes off the gas. So when should you use this style of leadership? Well, when subordinates are experts, so democratic leadership styles work well when working with subject domain experts. So for example, technology experts or pharmaceutical experts, you should use it when it's necessary to create ownership amongst the team. So by involving the team in decision-making and planning, you implicitly create buy-in both to the decision itself and to the plan to execute that decision. And that makes your team members much more committed to the plan. So the next style of leadership, the third style of leadership is transformational leadership. And a transformational leadership leader is one who models the behavior they expect to see, sets clear goals and has high expectations whilst at the same time supporting and emotionally guiding subordinates to achieve. Now, at the very foundation of transformational leadership is the consistent promotion of a compelling vision along with a set of values to live and work by. Now, transformational leaders create a culture of no blame where the focus is on the problem at hand and how to solve it rather than who is responsible for creating the problem. Examples of transformational leaders include Peter Drucker and Barack Obama. Transformational leaders are sometimes known as quiet leaders, known for possessing a willingness to lead by example. They often don't make detailed strategic plans, but instead facilitate conversations between key people, both within and outside of their organization to achieve this end. Now, the advantages of transformational leadership are it creates balanced goals. So transformational leaders balance the need for both short term and long term goals. There is a lot of trust with transformational leaders. So subordinates feel supported and deeply trust their leader because they behave with integrity and build strong coalitions. And thirdly, Transformational leadership has a vision focused communication. So these type of leaders are very focused on the long term strategic vision. And by communicating their vision regularly and with passion and clarity, they keep everyone on side, bought in and motivated to eventually reach that vision. Now, there are some disadvantages to transformational leadership. It can be very ineffective in the beginning. So because transformational leadership is built on trust, so thus, transformational leaders can be ineffective at the start of their leadership journey as they have yet to really build trust with their team or build strong collaborations. They're also not particularly detail oriented. So whilst transformational leadership leaders are characterized by inspiring others, they can struggle with the detail of day to day implementation. So when should you use transformational leadership? Well, when it's necessary to have an inspiring long-term vision of the future, when the right to lead has been earned. So transformational leadership is often not appropriate when you're new to an organization and both your leadership is unproven and you've yet to build the necessary trust with your team. And you should also consider using it when an urgent short-term focus 
isn't necessary. Now, because transformational leadership focuses so much on a vision of the future, it isn't really appropriate when all the focus needs to be on the very short term. So the final style of leadership we're going to look at is laissez-faire leadership. And this is where the leader doesn't actually lead the team, but instead allows the team to be entirely self-directed. Now, this style of leadership is also known as the hands-off style. And in contrast to the other leadership styles we've looked at, all authority is given to subordinates, including goal setting, problem solving and decision making. So from the leader's perspective, the key to success is to build a really strong team and then stay out of their way. Now, a common question when people first learn about laissez-faire leadership is what actually does a laissez-faire leader do? Because it can seem like they maybe do nothing. Well, this will differ from leader to leader, but typically they're more concerned with the creation and articulation of their vision. And they're also concerned with which steps to take to help achieve the vision. But once they've decided that, it's then left to the team to work out how to achieve each of those particular steps. Now, an example of a laissez-faire leader is Warren Buffett. Now, a laissez-faire leadership style typically works best near the very top of the organization where senior leaders appoint other senior leaders to run their respective departments or business units and let them get on with it. So you can think of a CEO having a head of engineering, but all the detail within engineering, you know, is decided not by the CEO, but by the head of engineering. Now, advantages of this style are that it creates personal responsibility. Laissez-faire leadership styles challenge subordinates to take responsibility for their work and the outcomes of that work. It supports fast course corrections. So motivated people working autonomously are typically able to overcome roadblocks and adjust course far more quickly than when they need to seek approval. And it supports higher retention. So when successful, it can result in higher retention of subordinates as motivated people thrive in this kind of environment. Now, in terms of disadvantages, there can be a lack of accountability because there's nobody accountable to take the credit in cases of success or to take the blame in cases of failure. It can cause higher stress levels. So subordinates can suffer from higher stress if they feel unsupported by their leader. And it can result in missed deadlines. You know, self-organizing teams without oversight or direction are prone to miss deadlines. So when should you use this style? Well, it's good to use it when you're working with creative experts. It's good to use it with people who are proven. And it's also, you know, good to use this style of leadership when your team is very, very driven when your team is motivated to succeed on their own. So, so far we've looked at four leadership styles, but now we want to take a look at a framework that can help you make sense of those four leadership styles and any others you might encounter. Now, in addition to the four styles we've looked at, there are many, many other styles, including strategic leadership, servant leadership, coaching style of leadership, bureaucratic leader leadership. There's many, many more. But to make matters even more complex, no two leaders will be exactly the same and may in fact have characteristics borrowed from other leadership styles, you know, to suit their needs as they feel best. And with all those factors, this diagram you see here can be really helpful in thinking about where different leadership styles have their main areas of focus. And you can use this framework to think about any leadership style you can encounter. So what you can see here is autocratic leaders have a high emphasis on tasks and quite a low emphasis on people. And democratic leaderships have a high emphasis on task, but also a high emphasis on people. And then you can see as we work around, eventually we get to laissez-faire leadership and they have a low task emphasis, 
and equally a low people emphasis. Now, the keen eyed amongst you will have noticed these boxes are labelled one, two, three, and four. And that is to do with subordinates. Now, the higher the skill level of your subordinates, the higher the box number that will be appropriate as a style of leadership. So autocratic leadership is good for people with very low skill levels, whereas laissez-faire leadership works well for people with a very high degree of skill and self-direction. So essentially, the leader's behavior should change according to which quadrant their subordinates or their followers' capabilities fall within. Now, another point to note from this diagram is that the abilities of the leader, both in terms of soft skills and hard skills, must increase as you move from box one to four. So basically saying that being an autocratic leadership requires a much smaller set of skills and is less nuanced than being a laissez-faire leader. So in summary, there are as many different leadership styles as there are leaders, but broadly they can be categorized according to people focus and task focus. Now, Lewin described four leadership styles, autocratic, democratic, transformational, and laissez-faire. Now, although we've only looked at those four styles in this video, the model described should help you understand and categorize any style of leadership you encounter. So that's it from me. Really hope you enjoyed this lesson and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.